Oh, hello there. I'm Bill Chan. I'm Nimikong. I'm Van Chan. In this class, I'll read to all of you. Chapter 3, Section 4 of A Tale of Two Cities, Book the Sick and Golden Fert. Ass. Ah. A Tale of Two Cities, Book the Sick and Golden Thread. Charles Dickens. Chapter 3, Section 4. Cruncher had next to attend while Mr. Attorney General turned the whole suit of clothes, Mr. Striver had fitted on the jury. Inside us. Dad. And the prisoner a hundred times worse. Lastly. Came my lord himself. Turning the suit of clothes. Now inside out. Now outside in. But on the whole decidedly trimming and shaping them into grave clothes for the prisoner. And now. The jury turned to consider. And the great flies swarmed again. Mr. Carton. Who had so long sat looking at the ceiling of the court. Changed neither his place nor his attitude. Even in this excitement. While his own friend. Mr. Striver. Massing his papers before him. Whispered with those who sat near. And from time to time glanced anxiously at the jury. While all the spectators moved more or less. And grouped themselves anew. While even my lord himself rose from his seat. And slowly paced up and down his platform. Feverish. This woman sat leaning back. With his torn gun half of him. A straight removal. His hands in his pockets. And his eyes on the ceiling as they had been all day. Something especially reckless in his demeanour. Not only gave him a disreputable look. Ernest says. When they were compared together. Had strengthened. That many of the lookers on. Taking note of him now. Said to one another they would hardly have thought the two were so alike. Mr. Cruncher made the observation to his next neighbour. And added. I told half a guinea that he don't get no low work to do. Don't look like the sort of one to get any. It. This mister. And. For now. When Miss Minnetus had dropped upon her father's breast. He was the first to see it. And to say audibly. Officer. Look to that young lady. Help the gentleman to take her out. There was much commiseration for her as she was removed. And much sympathy with her father. It had evidently been a great distress to him. To have the days of his imprisonment recalled. He had shown strong internal agitation when he was questioned. And that pondering or brooding look which made him old. Had been upon him. Like a heavy coat. Ever since. As he passed out. The jury. Who had turned back and paused a moment. Spoke. Through their foreman. They were not agreed. I wish to retire. Not agreed. But signified his pleasure that they should retire under watch and ward. And retired himself. The trial had lasted all day. And the lamps in the court were now being lighted. It began to be remarked that the jury would be out a long while. 
the spectators dropped off to get refreshment, and the prisoner withdrew to the back of the dock and sat down. Mister, why? Who had gone out when the young lady and her father went out? Now we appeared and beckoned to Jerry. Who? In the second interest, could easily get near him. Jerry, if you wish to take something to eat, you can. But keep in the way. You will be sure to hear when the jury come in. Don't be a moment behind them, for I want you to take the verdict back to the bank. You are the quickest messenger I know. Jerry had just enough for head to knuckle, and he knuckled it in acknowledgement of this communication and a shilling. Mister. Carton came up at the moment. And Dutch Mister. Laurie on the arm. She is greatly distressed. But her father is comforting her. I'll tell the prisoner so. It won't do for a respectable young gentleman like you to be seen speaking to him publicly. Wist it. Roy reddened as if he were conscious of having debated the point in his mind. I missed it. Carton made his way to the outside of the bar. The way out of court lay in that direction. And Jerry followed him. All eyes. Is. And spikes. Wistu. The prisoner came forward directly. You will naturally be anxious to hear of the witness. Miss Manet. She will do very well. I am deeply sorry to have been the cause of it. Could you tell her so for me? Yes. I could. I will. Wister. Carton's manner was so careless as to be almost insolent. He stood. Half turned from the prisoner. Lunging with his elbow against the bar. I do ask it. What said Carton? Still only half turned towards him. Do you expect? Wister. It's the wisest thing to expect. And the likeliest. Waitering on the way out of court not being allowed. Jerry heard no more. But left them so like each other in feature. So unlike each other in manner standing side by side. Both reflected in the glass above them. An hour and a half limped heavily away in the thief and rascal crowded passages below. Even though a 